What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? So last time in the previous tutorial I showed you guys how to do uh, how to apply movement so we have a controllable character here using W and S for forward and back. In this tutorial I'll show you guys how to apply rotation and apply force. So we're gonna start with apply rotation and that's gonna be for the D and A key. So I'm gonna do D key equals now I'm going to copy this, paste it, and input active, and I'll change this to D key. Now I'm going to copy this and create one for the A key. This will be A, and here we'll change this D to A. Uh, and map it out the way you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the same keys as mine. Just make sure you do all the setup correctly. Now LF. Uh, D key player dot apply rotation R with a capital and the same thing as movement the brackets thing where you have two outer brackets and then two inner brackets uh, separating the inner bracket and the outer uh, the closing outer bracket with uh, a comma and then here we'll have zero zero and we want to create a variable for the rotation speed we'll call this rot speed equals 0 0.05 I guess I'll we'll try that out and we want it to be on the z-axis because we want it to rotate this way this way and that's on the z-axis z-axis is what's gonna be rotating so uh, it's the same as usual uh, movement uh, movement setup using logic bricks it's just using Python now and on the z-axis we want to set rot speed here we'll want it to be set to let's put false to make it global just to be sure that nothing weird happens and we hit P now D and it rotates but it rotates in the opposite direction for me at least so I'm gonna add a negative there and then I'm just gonna copy this and you just hit enter tab paste it elif a key and remove this and we got our basic rotation here so we have a character that whoa hold on something went totally wrong there and I'm hold on elif a key I'm not sure what's going on so let's check our console here no error apparently so let me try this again move rotate oh there we go okay so uh, the problem here with the setup you notice that you have to if you're moving you can't rotate you can only rotate when you're still uh... that's a problem here because we used l if here so uh... and that's a mistake i shouldn't have made but we used l if so at this point it's going to do the w key and it's going to ignore the rest it's not going to do the rotation so we're just going to change these to if statements here we'll have if and then l if and that should uh... work fine so yeah now it works fine if we remove that l if what that does is okay it's going to say this is top priority L if this and then we have a new if so it's gonna say okay so this L if belongs to the first if if the first if is not happening then the L if statement is gonna happen here it's a totally new section we could put a comment here just to note that this is a new section for uh, Python it's gonna say okay this is a totally different thing it's gonna work with this so uh, that's how it works uh, now when you move you notice that you can rotate if you hit both rotation buttons because my rot my D key is set to be above the A key when I click both it's only gonna detect the D key so yeah that's basically our rotating character now if we want to use apply force I'm gonna be using it for a simple mechanism here when our character stops I want him to drift a little bit now you could do this with friction and blender simulating friction but I like to use uh, uh, force because I feel like I have more control there so when you release I want it to drift a little bit so it's a bit smoother uh, let's just set this to camera always camera I'm just gonna set this to camera so that it follows so we have a more game like view here and our character is gonna be the cube minimum five maximum let's put maximum eight and height we'll set it to three and we'll see how that works it's just nice to have a little camera there it's a little too close so I'll make this 10 
I'm going to make this 15. Yep, that's better. So now when we release our character, I want him to drift a little bit. So what we're going to do here is uh, map a key called... I want it to happen when he releases the forward key, which is W in my case. We're going to make the character drift a little bit. So we have rotating, moving character. It's fine as it is, but we can make it a bit fancier. So I'm going to map a key called... Whoops. Make sure um, I have my mouse over the text editor. W key rel, which would stand in this case for release. Call it whatever you want. This is when this is going to detect if the player releases the W key. That's when I want him to drift a little bit. So we're going to put this stuff here, except we're going to change one thing. It's the exact same uh, line here, except we're going to change KX input. Leave the input there just released because we want it to detect it only when it's released and here what I'm gonna do is uh, add another elif statement here under the movement section elif and we could document this too it's good to document uh, it's a good habit so uh, movement or let's say translation and under this we'll keep that let's see here we'll have rotation so we kind of know what happens. And I think this line is unnecessary now. We kind of see uh, the difference. And here in this elif statement, we'll have w key rel colon. And we're going to put in a plot player, first of all, dot apply force. Uh, so it's the same thing as apply movement, the same sort of uh, bracket setup and true and false. Uh, I'm going to set this to false. And here we're going to have zero. Here is going to be the value, here in the middle, is going to be the value of uh, the drifting that we want. And we're going to set drift to equal, let's say, 50 maybe. I'm not sure. It might be too much, but we'll see. Drift and here when we test this out there seems to be very little drift even maybe no drift uh... let's see oh i see there's a there's an error here so in line thirty two and that's over here global name drift is not defined that's because i put derft <laughs> derft here uh, Let's make sure it's spelt correctly and let's test this out. Maybe increase the value. Let's put something more noticeable. 100. Okay, it's drifting in the... In the let's set it to true. How about that? True would be better. And you notice that there's a lot of uh, testing going on here. Maybe it would be more visible if we zoom out here. Yep, you can. You notice there, there's a bit of uh, drift happening. When I release it, it doesn't stop immediately. We can even make it more noticeable if we add another zero there, make it 1,000, and I release, and it's going to go on. So you don't want it to be that extreme, of course, but you notice here that when I release it, it drifts a little bit. So it's sort of smooth. Uh, makes it a bit smoother if you want to make your... Especially in a first-person shooter, like you notice in Portal, for example, there's a bit of a drift when you uh, stop moving. That's just to keep the experience more smooth. So you can do that uh, to make your game run a bit smoother. And you notice here it's not doing any drifting. It's not applying any force. It only applies it once we release and only once we release. So that keeps things uh, more in control. It's not a continuous drift, so it's not accelerating uh, constantly. So that's, uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys... I, I know I went over it a bit quick, but you guys should be uh, practiced enough. It's the same apply movement, apply rotation, and apply force is really the same setup. Uh, you just have to play around with it a bit, get used to it, and uh, you'll get pretty good at it. Now, uh, there's a more advanced movement method, set linear velocity, uh, which I'm going to cover later on. It's not necessary. Now, you can make games with apply movement uh, and apply rotation and such. You could still use those. It's the same as logic pricks, but a linear velocity is a bit more advanced. I'll cover that uh, later. But for the next tutorial, what I'm going to be covering is uh, how to use logic bricks and uh, yeah, like uh, sensors and actuators in combination with your Python script. For example, if you have a collision sensor, I'll show you how to use that with your uh, Python script so that you can uh, detect 
using Python. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.